This is Lineage 2. And this is Lineage 2 being remade in Unity. Lineage 2 is an MMORPG developed by NCSoft. The game was released in South Korea in 2003 and in North America and Europe in 2004. I started playing when I was 15. By that time, the game had three expansions released. As a lot of people from the Baltic states and Eastern Europe did, I played on unofficial servers. After about two years, I moved on. Recently, I felt nostalgic and went back to see how things had changed. The game features vertical progression and as such, suffered from power creep over the years. Now, players are urged to progress through the early areas of the game as fast as possible to get to the newer, flashier content. I went back to check the old version of Lineage 2 and rediscovered just how much I enjoyed the ambience of the game. This got me thinking. Why not port some of the Lineage 2 content to a modern engine such as Unity? It could make for a fun experiment and allow me to indulge in some reminiscing. As part of the project, I decided to record the journey to document the lessons learned. First things first, I did some research to see if anyone had ported the game's content to another engine. LU4 is a project that started all the way back in 2016 and is focused on porting the game to Unreal Engine 4. Speaking of Unreal Engine, the YouTube channel of Meisdel showcases a project porting the game to UE5. These are some seriously impressive efforts, but they both strayed too far away from the original aesthetic for my taste. I also found that someone managed to port some game apps to Unity. It looks like the project was discontinued and whatever information is available on the asset conversion process is on Russian-speaking forums. Quick tangent, I also found a YouTube channel by the name of Maps Crafter, and they are making fully custom maps for unofficial Lineage 2 servers. It's really amazing work and I recommend checking it out. First thing I wanted to do was port some models to Unity. I downloaded the Lineage 2 interlude client since it seemed like a good compromise between the old school and contemporary versions. Lineage 2 seems to be running on a modified version of Unreal Engine 2. Some sources state it's Unreal Engine 2.5. After a quick search, I found UE Viewer, which is a tool for inspecting Unreal Engine resources such as models, textures, and animations. Quick setup later, I was able to browse the contents of the game's packages. I went for this particular sort since I remember its design so vividly. Static meshes can be exported as both PSK and GLTF formats. Since Unity does not natively support either of them, I went with PSK. I found this Blender plugin for importing PSK and PSA files. However, it's no longer being maintained. Luckily, someone else created a fork and continued development. This plugin was last updated a year ago. There's also this plugin that's actively being maintained. It looks like models exported in PSK format lose their smoothing properties. I decided not to worry too much about it for now and went with this plugin since it auto smooths the model on import. Next, I imported the PSK file into Blender and exported as FBX. The Unity project is set up with Unity 2023.1 beta simply because I wanted to play around with some new features. I'm using the Universal Render Pipeline since it gives me more flexibility if I want to run the project on low-end hardware. I really like how alpha textures were used here to give the blade's silhouette more curves without using more triangles. Here we have our very first Lineage 2 asset in Unity. Amusingly, I really don't remember these textures being so blurry when I originally played the game. Since this particular item has a rather stylized texture, I decided to try a machine learning image upscaling solution and managed to get some pretty good results. I'll definitely experiment with texture upscaling more later. Here are a few more weapon models, the first three using upscale textures. Next, it was time to set up the character. I located the package containing the character body part meshes and the package containing the associated textures. After importing the textures into the Unity project, I found the full plate armor set textures. I decided to use that for the character as I always liked the design. Next up were the character meshes. If you're interested in trying this yourself, here's a graphic explaining what the character asset names signify. After a quick trip from Blender to Unity, I had mesh 008 legs in Unity. With the workflow confirmed, the rest of the body parts followed. 
Afterwards, it was a matter of creating and setting up materials for the relevant textures. It's worth noting that some armor pieces had specular textures while others didn't. Some used the same textures for both diffuse and specular. Also, some materials need to be rendered double-sided to look correct. Just for fun, I also set up the Light Majestic Armor Set. It's basically mesh 008 pieces with different materials. At this point, the character is missing a head, but I'll come back to that a bit later. It was then time to add animations. To do so, I imported a random glove mesh and imported the PSA animation file on top. As a word of caution, some character meshes do not have the same bones, which will fail the animation import process. Additionally, some bones also have odd names that don't match the ones in other files. I grouped together all character body part meshes and added the animation at VX model. Since I will be using the animation mesh rig, I removed them from all other body parts. This script ensures that all body part bones synchronize with the animation mesh rig. Finally, I set up an animator controller with an idle animation, ensuring that the idle animation is set to loop. A quick test revealed the animation needed a speed adjustment. In Lineage 2, the character animation speed depended on the speed statistics. Okay, it was time to address the head. In the game, the character's head would rotate to face the selected target. As such, I'll parent the head mesh to the head bone. The head itself is made up of the face and hair meshes. Once the head was assembled, I attached it to the head bone using a parent constraint. I'm illustrating the head rotation by changing the parent constraint rotation offset but it would normally be done by rotating the head bone to ensure that the neck deforms correctly. I'll revisit this part once I have a lock-on system in place. Up to this point, I've been ignoring a tiny issue. My guy is less than half a meter tall. After some research, I found that Unreal Engine 2 uses Unreal units for measurement. For example, 52.5 Unreal units equal to one meter. And that doesn't even mean that the developers actually follow the real-life scale for objects. Sticking to the right scale is important for a variety of reasons, such as rendering. Since I might want to try this in VR, I will scale the character to around 1.8 meters and adjust the world size proportionately later. And finally, I assemble a character controller script. Lineage 2 uses a click-to-move scheme and featured janky arrow control support. It never felt right since it was built on top of an architecture that was never meant to have direct movement controls. At this point, I felt that I might as well put the sword and the character together. And that's the character all done for now. At this point, I needed to set up some terrain. The map in Lineage 2 is divided into many smaller tiles. For my initial attempt, I wanted to limit myself to a manageable amount of content. The Talking Island region was the very first area I experienced and as such I decided to go with it. It's also nice that it's a region consisting of four neatly isolated tiles. I found a tool called L2PE which allowed me to access terrain data in the form of Terrain Info Zero files. The data referenced height maps and splat maps for each tile. I tried using UE Viewer to extract these, but I was only successful in obtaining the splat maps. After some research, it turned out that Unreal Engine's native height map format is G16, which cannot be extracted using UE Viewer. There are two ways to get the height maps. One is using the G16 Edit tool, and the other is to open the game's map files in a compatible Unreal Editor version. The editor approach will output a weird looking 16-bit BMP image. I wrote a Unity script to read the Terrain Info Zero file and produce a terrain object. An important note is that the terrain resolution has to be a power of 2 plus 1 to accommodate a seam. The script reads the bytes of the appropriate height map, skipping the first 24, since that is the BMP file header. Then I account for the terrain seams by filling them with the height values of the neighboring texels. 
and finally I scale the position of the terrain. After a quick test with region 1725, I set up all four tiles and added a water plane. Next up, I wanted to set up texture layers using the splat maps that were extracted earlier. The UDK documentation was useful to understand how the layers are handled. I made some further modifications to the map generator script. The splat maps had to be flipped vertically due to the differences between Unreal Engine and Unity. Due to the terrain seam, I had to offset the splat map UV sampling. At this point, the terrain is much more recognizable. The next missing piece were the deco layers, which are basically terrain detail objects such as grass. Just like with the texture splat maps, the detail density maps had to be vertically flipped. I'm also cheating a bit here by not reading the detail height data. The terrain now has grass. I wasn't happy with the default detail look in Unity, so I made a custom grass shader. This shader adds wind swaying and modifies the normals to point upwards, which will help with matching the terrain lighting. Now the grass is blending in with the terrain. At this point, I was missing static meshes for geometry such as buildings, bridges, and so on. I used a tool called L2SMR to extract all static mesh position, scale, and rotation data for each tile. Based on the data, I extracted the appropriate mesh and texture files using UE Viewer. Unfortunately, this resulted in a large number of files. It's worth noting that some textures come with additional data files specifying texture properties. At this point, I was not interested in processing all these files manually. As such, I wrote a Blender script that could import each model, export it as an FBX, and delete any unnecessary files. Now that all the necessary files were imported to Unity, I made another script that would go through and process all of them. Using the exported props files, the script set up the materials for all the models, including assigning the correct textures and shader properties. The map generator script was modified to instantiate the static meshes at the right position. Finally, the talking island region was assembled. There are some issues though. There's this floating mesh over here. The fire glow mesh material is wrong. Some floors are missing. It appears that some geometry data is defined outside of static mesh models. There's also an issue at the Elven Ruins location where the terrain should have a hole punched through it. There are clear gaps where the terrain tiles meet. To resolve the seams, I modified the map generator so that each terrain samples the height values of two nearby terrain edges. There's still a small hole at the very corner, but overall it's a lot better. I put together a skybox shader. It has three parts, the gradient, horizon clouds, and top clouds that scroll. The trees had some movement in the game, so I replicated that using a shader. The waterfall now also has a scrolling texture shader. I'm aware that the original used texture animation, but this will do for now. As for lighting, I set up adaptive probe volumes since they are useful for covering large spaces and not having to worry about light map friendly UV unwraps. The terrain, however, is using a light map. Overall, I'm quite impressed with the adaptive probe volumes. Lastly, the original game used fog to disguise the draw distance. I really like the aesthetic and tried to preserve it using the excellent atmospheric height fog plugin by Boxophobic. It's not a full volumetric solution, but it's performant and looks great. And after some light tweaks, I was in a good place to stop. There's still so much to do, and I haven't yet decided where to take this project. Maybe try mobile or VR? Let me know what ideas you have, and in the meantime, enjoy this tour of Talking Island in Unity.